Hello, my name is Arthur Cole and I'm the Education Outreach Officer for the Natural History Museum of Jamaica. And today I'm going to take you on a journey of the breadfruit. Now the breadfruit is believed to have originated from the South Pacific area, which extends from New Guinea through to the Indo-Malayan archipelago. The spread of the breadfruit to areas of the Pacific is credited to migrating Polynesians. Europeans were introduced to the breadfruit during their explorations in Marrakesh and then Tahiti. In the late 1500s to early 1600s, they were amazed to find a great, tasty, starchy fruit that had a texture and flavor similar to the bread and realized that it was a good addition. To our diet. The breadfruit is scientifically known as Artocarpus altilis and it was delivered to Jamaica in 1793. And it was intended to feed an enslaved population but it was rejected as a strange fruit and for the first 50 years was used to feed pigs. The very first breadfruit which found its way onto Jamaican shores was a seeded type and it was called a breadnut, which was obtained from a cargo of plants destined for Martinique in 1782. This specimen found pride of place in the private collection of Mr. Hinton East, then Receiver General of Jamaica. This acquisition, however, Jamaican plantation owners learned about the favored seedless type. And in 1775, they wanted to offer a prize for its introduction into the island, but that failed. However, due to a number of factors, including famine, in the 1780s and a cessation of food supplies from the North American to British colonies as a result of the American Revolution. Mr. Hinton East petitioned King George III to organize an expedition to collect seedless breadfruits that would provide a cheap, high energy food for the enslaved on the sugar estate in the British colonies. The expedition was backed by botanist Sir Joseph Banks. He was the then patron of Kew Gardens and the president of the Royal Society in England. And he was commissioned to transport proper gills of the breadfruit to the West Indies for propagation. Two expeditions were launched and these were led by Captain William Fly of the HMS Bounty, who proceeded to South Pacific to collect these plants. After 10 months sailing, they arrived at Tahiti, where they spent five months collecting and potting seedless breadfruit. During their stay ashore, some of the crew members formed relationships with the locals. Second in command, Fletcher Christian even married a Tahita local. The crew set sail for the Caribbean, taking with them 1,015 potted breadfruit plants. However, after reaching the approximately 2,100 kilometers west of Tahiti, as seen in the map, a rebellion led by Christian Fletcher ensued, and Bly, along with 18 other members of the crew were forced off the ship and into the ship's boat. So you can see there on the slide what happened as a result of that. This is known in our history books as the mutiny of the bounty.
For securing the plant, Bly won the Royal Society Medal and delivered the specimens to Jamaica's Bath Botanical Gardens in St. Thomas and Bluefields in the Westmoreland. Seedlings from those plants were later sent to other parishes across the island. The first Jamaican cinnamon on the slide goes as follows. Breadfruit make your color. This can be heard often by country people because they believe when you eat too much breadfruit, it allows you to see ghosts. All right, so we're going to be moving now to the anatomy of the breadfruit. The breadfruit is a fast growing tree attaining heights of over 85 feet and diameter ranging from 2 to 6 feet. Its bark is smooth and light colored and it produces many spreading branches which bears leaves that are thick, leathery, often glossy and more or less lobe. Its fruits are globe-like to long with a rind that is light green, which changes to yellowish green or yellow as it matures. There are two main types of breadfruit, the seeded type, which usually produces seeds per breadfruit, and the seedless type, which is far more popular in Jamaica and is reproduced through vegetative propagation. And when we say vegetative propagation, we mean that it's not by seeds, but it's from another part of the plant, and this is the root. So here on your screen, you'll see a labeled diagram of the various parts of the breadfruit plant. So there you have the root, and from the stem cutting, actually, you'll see the roots developing and you'll see also a new shoot okay the next slide you'll see a bark and if there's an indentation in the bark you see sap flowing from it and that's one of the things that the breadfruit tree is noted for its production of sap the next slide shows the male and female inflorescence so you see the, the arrangement of both the male and the female flower on the same axis. Our next slide shows the seedling. The next slide you'll see the leaf. So this is a, another part of the plant. And if you notice the lobe shape where the arrow points, many times we use this as a marker to determine the different types of cultivars. Some cultivars have a deeper lobe than others. Here is a labeled diagram of the various parts that make up the fruit of the breadfruit. So you see at the top of the diagram, you have the stalk. That's the part that attaches the fruit to the plant. You also have the rind, which is the outer part. As we said before, it's many times it's green and sometimes the texture can be smooth or it can be rough. You have the inner part, which is the fleshy part, which is what we consume. And on the center part, it's referred to as the heart, or in some cases, the core. This is the part that you normally throw away after we peg or peel our breadfruit. We're going to go to Jamaican saying number two. The breadfruit stem tells the end of the world. What does that mean? This is referring to the stalk of the breadfruit where there is a C shape that is seen when it is cut. So it is said that the shape closes and forms a zero when the world has come to an end. All right, so now we're going to be look at the varieties of the breadfruit. Now the cultivars is the term that we use to refer to the varieties of breadfruit 
that are below the level of a subspecies taxonomically. And it is found under cultivation only. Now here on your slide, you see the four different varieties are cultivars, which have been purported to have descended from those stocks that Captain Bly brought to Jamaica. So we have the St. Kitts or Timon, and this breadfruit, you'll notice that it does not have deep lobes, so that is it's distinguished from the other types of breadfruit. You have the cassava on the other hand, which is very deeply lobed, and that one can be distinguished differently from all the other types of the breadfruit. We have on the other part of the slide, the yellow and white heart, which pretty much are similar in terms of the protein and also the leaf pattern. And so we, we refer to them as the same type of cultivar. We also have the other variety, which is the matter breadfruit. This breadfruit, the leaves are not that distinguishable. However, the fruit on the outer rind is very rough. Hence the word or the, 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 the term maca, right? Because in Jamaica, maca means thorn. And so it has that type of appearance. All right. So we're going to be going on to our first Jamaican property. And it goes as follows. The more you chop breadfruit root, the more it spring up. And that actually means that Jamaican sea breadfruit as a symbol of perseverance. And that's based on the fact that the trees have been noted for their longevity and the way that they're able to propagate themselves by sending up suckers from the root. And it has been said that when a breadfruit goes through a lot of stress, for example, the passage of a hurricane, or some other natural disaster. Whenever there are parts of it that are broken off, those are the parts that actually spring up. We'll now be looking at the uses of breadfruit. Breadfruit can be used nutritionally, traditionally, and for medicinal purposes. Nutritionally, the breadfruit is said to be high in nutrients as it is high in carbohydrates, and is also a good source of antioxidants, calcium, carotenoids, copper, dietary fiber, energy, iron, magnesium, niacin, omega-3 and omega-6, phosphorus, potassium, protein, thiamine, vitamin A and vitamin C. So it's known as a superfood. So it's one of those foods that you should be consuming a lot of. Oh. Breadfruit is such a versatile fruit, not only known for food, but virtually all parts of the breadfruit has been observed to be highly beneficial. Breadfruit is a rich source of energy and contains a high amount of fiber. Fiber decreases the triglycerides and the bad cholesterol. This high fiber content fruit protects the body against heart disease and heart attacks and helps control diabetes as well. All right, so now we'll be looking at the traditional uses of the breadfruit along with its medicinal uses. So for example, the leaves. The breadfruit is also used in Jamaican folklore and folk medicine. And one of the popular uses is as a tea, which is made from the breadfruit leaf to lower high blood pressure. The juice from the leaf has also been used to make eardrops and to relieve headaches. Crushed leaves on the tongue can be used to combat thrush and roasted leaves are known to treat an enlarged spleen, cirrhosis of the liver, diabetes and asthma. 
In rural areas of Jamaica, persons also use the breadfruit leaves to relieve headaches by having the breadfruit leaves tied to the head using the bark of a banana plant. The bark of the banana had to be wet as it is said to be stronger in that state. All right, so we're looking at the sap now. So the breadfruit latex, also known as a sap, also has medicinal value. It is purported to have antifungal properties and can be used as a poultice on tumors as it is also diluted to combat diarrhea. It can also be massaged as an ointment for broken bones, sprains, and bruises. And it can be used to heal sores and relieve stomach aches. Additionally, the sap is so sticky, it is also used as a sealant. Right, so the roots, the fruit, and the flower also have good uses. So for the root, it's beneficial with its antimicrobial and anti-tumor and purgative properties and can be used to fight headaches while the sap is useful in healing or ear infections. The fallen fruit along with the leaves is suitable as nutritious ingredients for animal feed. And the flower of the breadfruit plant has been used to make a repellent which is highly effective against insects. Some additional benefits of the breadfruit include keeping your heart strong, boosting your body's immunity, helping your body store nutrients, protecting and reversing oxidative stress, aiding in digestion, reducing the risk of colon cancer, boosting the resistance against infections, and may also help against certain cancers. And so much more research is needed for us to discover all the other types of benefits which no doubt are resident in the breadfruit. So we're gonna look at our second Jamaican proverb and it goes as follows. No make goat watchman for breadfruit tree. Or, no make goat trusty for breadfruit tree. And that means that it's referring to the occurrence of in nature of the goats as heavy feeders, which if they're if they get onto a breadfruit plant will devour it right down to the ground. And it represents so the goat represents a dishonest person who is entrusted with valuable things, such as a, a security guard or a watchman who who steals from the property that he's supposed to be watching. The breadfruit belongs to the mulberry family, the Moraceae, and includes other members such as figs, scientifically known as ficus, and the jackfruit with its scientific name, Artocarpus heterophyllus. Today, the breadfruit forms a regular part of Jamaican cuisine and it is consumed for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even a snack. It can also be served as a substitute for rice. Traditionally, it is boiled in soups with a few slices of the young breadfruit added to give a little body to the meal. It can be roasted or baked, roasted on the stove top, in the oven, or on wood fire. It can be fried, pickled, or juiced. And it's usually eaten with the Jamaican national dish, ackee and saltfish, or used in salads or as a side dish. And the fit breadfruit when boiled is soft enough to be mashed like potato and eaten with butter. While the ripe or slightly ripe breadfruit, which Jamaicans prefer the yellow heart breadfruit because it's ideal for roasting. So today, breadfruit is not restricted in use 
any longer to just being roasted fried and in soups. We have begun to explore many other different ways of preparing the breadfruit and I'm sure some of us have prepared ourselves to later on in this workshop explore using breadfruit to make smoothies and to make pizza. So that should be coming up after this presentation. All right, so we have come to the end of our presentation. And, you know, just to wrap up, you know, despite the breadfruit's uncertain introduction to the island, the breadfruit survived and has adapted to Jamaican folk culture. Gone are the days when the breadfruit was just roasted, fried, or boiled. We have discovered that there are so many other things that we can do with breadfruit. And not just the food, there's so many medicinal properties that are in the breadfruit. Indeed, breadfruit is a superfood. Thank you for participating.